My name is Henry Tenby, and this is the original in-house Herald of the Handley Page Herald. It's called Herald Facts. And uh, these publications, I believe, were published for about three years in the early 1960s uh, when the Handley Page Company was promoting um, their new aircraft, the twin Rolls-Royce Dart turboprop-powered Herald. And I've had these publications uh, for a number of years, and it's time to say goodbye to them. Uh, I'm going to show you what they look like, but while I was taking the photos to prepare these uh, to list them for sale on eBay, I found something really quite historic and remarkable, which I'm going to share with you in just one moment. First, I'm going to show you, um, give you a tour of these publications. There's, as I say, there's 36, and I'm guessing they, they were published once uh, a month. And there's rough, there are 36 of them. So it went for three years. So I'm guessing between 1960 and 63, uh, thereabouts, these Herald Facts publications were published. Now, all of them have the hole punches in them. So they were, they came from an archive. It's obvious that they came from an archive and I've had them for a while. And they're just, they're really nice pieces. They uh, have all kinds of sales and marketing information contained within their pages uh, relating to the performance of the aircraft and the manufacture uh, of the aircraft by Handley Page. So these would have been sent by mail to prospective airlines back in the early 1960s. But they're real nice, great historic airline artifacts. And um, I was curious where this collection came from because as as I say it is pretty much oh that's a nice shot of the model that's beautiful uh, I believe it's a complete set and I'm guessing well as you'll see it ends uh, at, at 36 I'm just going to walk you through them here isn't that a gorgeous display model I believe that's a Westway models looks like 125th scale and um, yeah these are just absolutely stunning the, co the cover shots, uh, isn't that nice? I guess that the cover shots are so nice on these. Too bad they're not in color, but they are. Oh, look at that interior shot. It's very, very nice to see. And then there's an article about the Dart engine. Just fantastic, actually. Uh, issue number 22. The versatile Herald mud bath or dust bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds very English. Herald Facts, Airborne Radar. I bought these uh, with a view to republishing them, but I am so busy with my own books and my own content, I don't think that I'll ever get around to republishing them. There's no trademark on them. It doesn't say, like, uh, this document is protected and cannot be reproduced. There's absolutely nothing like that on any of these uh, publications. It does say published by Handley Page Limited uh, and printed in England by Gale and Polden Limited. It says uh, to learn more, they give their address and their phone number, but they don't say you can't republish it, which does mean um, I would have been within rights to republish it, uh, to make it available to uh, enthusiasts. And that was my view. I thought, yeah, this is, you know, I paid good money for these and I thought they would make as I say, an excellent project to just republish in the year 2024 as a uh, memoir for the, the Handley Page Herald. But I've got, I found something within these pages which are absolutely amazing. And um, just, as I say, I'm just giving you a two. Oh, there. So they finally got a color issue for the American executives, the Dart Herald. They splurged and they did a, uh, a color piece with color insets and color photos. Isn't that special? They decided, well, we have to, we're marketing to the Americans, big bucks, so we better, to, let's, let's put some money into a color front cover. That looks interesting. International Aviation Corporation, Al Mims, and he, he ended up with a nice, look at those models, Lucky Devil. Uh, so I guess he wrote that. He wrote this article on the Herald. So, yeah, so thir issue number 33, 34, and then 35. And we're, uh, look at that, return to duty. Built-in safety on the Herald. 
doing training. And then this is number 36 is the very last issue uh, that came in this collection. So I'm guessing, look at that. Captain M. Rowan, Autair's Operations Director, Radio Miscellanea. Uh, so there we go. So I've, I uh, decided that it was time for me to pass this project on to somebody else. And I was going, I took the pictures of all of these uh, to list this as a lot, as a single lot on eBay. As I was going through, I did check all the pages. I flipped through, I opened up each one. I was just wanting to make sure that there was nothing in between the pages that shouldn't be there. And a slip of paper fell out, which absolutely floored me. Um, I think the slip of paper is worth more than the entire collection uh, of the magazines. And it is something I'm gonna share with you right now. This telegram was in one of the pages. And look at this. From Windsor Castle to Sir Frederick Hendley Page, CBE, Limes House, Stanmore, Middlesex. It says, I'm sure you will be delighted to hear that the two heralds gave excellent service throughout my tour of South America. Stop. I flew GAPWA for 99 hours and enjoyed every one of them. Stop. I'm only sorry that the one minor mishap should have caused so much comment. Philip. Right. The Duke of Edinburgh himself sent this telegram to the chairman of Hendley Page. It is to Sir Frederick, to Sir Frederick Hendley Page. These documents set of of Handley Page magazines was owned by none other than Sir Handley Page. And we have the evidence for it right here with an original telegram from the Duke of Edinburgh himself. I think this is unbelievable. As I said, I think this piece of paper right here uh, is more valuable, more historic than the actual magazines because it's the pedigree of who owned these magazines. The actual founder or the, the namesake, Hendley Page, was the man who owned these magazines. And this is the telegram that he received from the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen's husband. And is there a year on, is there a year? Yes, 7th of April, 1962. So uh, what a historic find this is. I am, I was going to list this on eBay but I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might just send it to an auction house in the UK uh, to be listed um, at a proper auction because I think this is a very, very, very historic uh, set of uh, aviation airline publications that possibly even belongs in a museum. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I absolutely look forward to hearing your comments. And if you know of any auction houses that would be suitable for me to uh, contact in the UK, I'd love to hear from you. Look forward to your comments. Thanks for watching. My name is Henry Tenby, and I'd like to introduce my brand new book for classic airline fans. It's called Air Travel Time Machine, and it features over 600 fabulous color Kodachrome memories taken between 1942 and 1960. So this book is a culmination of 30 years of collecting vintage old aircraft slides uh, from the 1950s and 60s. And this has been my life passion for decades. And the type of pictures that I am very interested in are not the standard images of just sterile shots of airplanes. These are pictures that tell a story, that show people, that show the interiors of airplanes, and show what travel was like during the golden age of aviation. This book is 288 pages. It's a hardcover book printed on a 106 pound GSM, high quality gloss paper. It is a beautiful presentation and you are going to love the images and it is filled with captions and memories and great images that'll take you back to the post-war era of air travel. I hope you enjoy purchasing my book and reading my book. 
What follows are a selection of sample images from inside the book, just to give you an idea of the atmosphere and memories that are included in this incredible book. So I really hope that you'll enjoy the contents. It is a unique book because it really is a time travel wormhole view back through the sands of time to what air travel was like during the golden age of aviation and airlines. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you'll consider purchasing my book. As a side note, this is a limited production book. We're only printing 300 copies for the UK and Europe and another 300 copies for Canada USA distribution. So if you'd like to order a book, be sure to do so as soon as possible so that you are guaranteed to get a copy in your library. Thanks again.